Hey everyone, and welcome to part 4 of Let's Clone a Pokemon game. So, since last time I checked out 4.3, and it seems pretty awesome. It has a really nice sprite manager and everything, but for this game, I would have to go and recreate everything. So it's pretty much starting the tutorial from scratch if I went down that route. So I decided I'm just going to be creating tutorials for my already existing Unity tutorial list. So I'm going to be covering some 2D tutorials using that new toolset. So if you guys are, um, if you guys know how to use those tools, you can go along and do that route, or you can just wait for my tutorials or whatever you guys want to do. But I'm just going to continue the, tu the tutorial as is. Um, we're mo mainly going to be covering the mechanics of the game and not worrying too much about the tile sets and whatnot. Um, we just want to get everything implemented and everything working correctly. And so however you guys want to set up your tile system, whether it be this way or with the new 2D features, um, it, both ways will work just fine. So we're just going to continue along, and since last time, if you guys haven't been following along, we got our player movement going. And it'll go to each section of the grid and lock in. And you can hold down the key as well and move, and it'll stay locked into each, each section of the grid. So from here, what we want to add is we want to add a simple combat system. So, or a counter system for when we're entering combat. So what I did was I went and set up a few things. So I'll go over and explain everything that I did set up so we can understand and follow along. Um, I made a walk counter and a walk counter too. So this is pretty much the number that you're currently at. So each time you walk, this counter will tick and increase by one. And walk counter two is a random um, this will be between whatever number you want to have that set as. So right now I believe I set mine for between 5 and 15. Yep. So as we're going along, this counter will increase. And when it equals to whatever this number is, then it'll take us into combat. So yeah, our last variable is, is in combat. So if this occurs, we want to switch over to our combat camera and trigger our combat code. We're going to be going over that in a later tutorial, we just want to get the movement set up for that. So we'll scroll down here, and I created a new function for calculate walk, and this will be calculating all our walking, so once we walk, it'll calculate it out. So our first if statement is walk counter is greater than or equal to walk counter 2, and this just means if it's equal to that or if it goes over it, um, which is something we don't want, but if it accidentally happens, it'll still take us into combat. So, walk counter 2, it'll roll a brand new random, so this is just calculating it before we get out of combat. Uh, our original walk counter is going to be down to 0, so it'll keep increasing as we're walking after we get out of combat, and I'll try equaling to this again. And then enter combat, and this just tells you, oh, we've entered combat, so I guess if we enter combat, we can add is in combat is equal to true. And this is how we'll activate our combat script. And now while this is equal to true, we want to disable our movement. So actually, let me think. We could, we could do this a couple different ways, I guess. Because when we do enter into combat, we want to use our keys still to select the different options. So I guess we could just make a new set of keys just to make it easier, or we could actually put the keys somewhere else. But I think uh, having two separate keys might be easier. But I mean, however you guys want to set up. So we'll just say, if we're not in combat, We can use these keys, but if we are, we won't be able to. And we'll just have a different set of these same keys for being able to scroll through the different menus and stuff like that. So we're going to have a couple of different things set up there. Uh, we could also go back and adjust this differently so we have less code. But for now, we just want to get everything set up properly. Also, another thing we want to add is this calculate walk. So every time we walk, it'll or call this and either it'll take us into combat if it's equal to that, or else it'll increase our counter, which allows us to walk more. So we need to apply this to each direction. 
and so we'll calculate walk for each direction that our player is currently walking. And I believe that is all the code, um, except one more thing in the start function. I did walk counter 2, and I did the random in here, and this is because at the start our walk counter 2 will be equal to 0, which is something we don't want, or else you'll instantly be thrown into combat. So what we want to do is we want to just randomize that at the beginning. Now we can adjust these numbers in the future depending on what zones you're in. Maybe change that to be something different. But for now we're just going to leave it pretty basic. So what we can do now, I think I saved it. But we can jump in the game and I can show you guys how this works. So in our console, we can start walking, random directions. And you can see you have entered combat. And now I'm trying to tap my keys and I can't do anything. And this is where we want to actually enter combat. So we'll just set up the basics for this. It'll just be duplicating the camera. And we can call this combat camera. And we can pretty much take this combat camera and drag it somewhere off to the side. So this is where our battle area is going to be. I guess we can lay something out real quick. So this won't be the final texture or anything like that. We're just trying to lay it out so we know exactly what's going on or that we're in a new area. So I'll just throw this over here just so we can stay a little bit more organized. And we'll call this combat area. And we'll just stretch this so we can tell that it's, or maybe not. <laughs> um, let's see here. I guess what we can do is just do a random pattern just so we know that we're actually in there. So where is our combat camera? So we see that's all set up there. We can disable that. We can go into here. Now what we're going to want to do for this is set up our cameras. So we can go, call this um, camera main as a game object, and then variable combat camera. We'll make that a game object as well. Save that. Um, and then what we want to do is when we enter combat, we want to do main camera dot active equals false combat camera dot active equals true hit control s to save that now we'll jump onto our player and we should have some let's see here Oh, I named it camera main. Just so it doesn't get mixed up with the actual main camera itself. Okay, so that's working. And now what we want to do is we want to drag both our cameras. So our main camera goes onto there. And our combat camera goes onto there. So they should switch when we get into combat. And one other thing we want to do before then is we want to fix this camera to be locked onto the player. So we'll just drag it directly onto our player and it should be able to follow our player around. So now you see our camera follows our player around. Let's wait till we get into combat. And it takes us to our second camera. And now we're going to replace this art with actual combat art and we're going to be messing with the Unity animation system to animate how the characters, you know, zoom in or pan over into the battle and then change up all those animations. But 
that'll be in a later tutorial. We're just going to cover the basics with this one. And I'll teach you guys how to actually fight a battle, spawn Pokemon in the battle, depending on what area you're in, and stuff like that. So I'm going to figure that all out, how, how I want to set that up, and I'll bring you guys another tutorial soon. Stay tuned.